Alright, let's do some F for fun. <laughs> Not good. Papa Papa Fermi's Fermi's good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. This was absolutely the best black pen, red pen impersonation I have ever done before. I'm so proud of myself. We are doing some math for fun today, just like Steve did back then. We want to compare pi to the e to e to the pi. And our main tool for today is going to be one of the many definitions of the exponential function, namely e to the x is nothing but its tail series expansion at zero. So k from zero to infinity of x to the k over k factorial. And actually we can expand this out a little bit. So this is nothing but one plus um, x, yeah, one plus x, plus x squared over two factorial plus dot dot dot. And you see, today we are not going to give a shit about this tail right here. We are just going to take a look at a little partial sum right here. And what we want to show at first today is that e to the x is greater or equal to one plus x. Just for intuition purposes, we are going to subtract this term on both sides. That's equivalent to saying we have e to the x minus 1 minus x is greater or equal to 0. And we want this rule right here to hold. Um, you can make it hold for all x, not equal to 0, but no, also equal to 0. But since pi and e are both strictly positive, why not just restrict it to for all x greater or equal to 0? Okay, coolio. We want to show that this holds right here for those x values. And you see, what that also means is that we just need to show that this function right here of x on the left hand side, let's call it f of x, is strictly increasing on the certain interval. Um, let's specify the interval. That thing is equivalent to saying x is element of 0 infinity, this interval right here. So we just want to show that it's strictly increasing. And if you take a look at, at the graph, it's definitely the case. It's going to look something like this right here. Okay, how can you show this? Well, we want to take a look at the derivative because the derivative gives us information about the slope of this function right here. And if we can show that the slope is always positive, well, then it's monotonically increasing on this whole interval. Let's take a look at this. Like I said, this is equivalent to saying sum f of x is greater or equal to zero. Well, now we take the derivative right here. That also means f prime of x. What is that? Well, e to the x stays as it is. Negative one is going to vanish and the other one is just negative one. And why not take a look at the lowest x value we can possibly get, just to get a feeling for it. Okay, what happens if we plug in zero into this first derivative? f prime of zero is nothing but, well, this is one minus one is just zero. So at x naught being equal to zero, this first derivative admits to a minimum or maximum. We have to check the second derivative to find out what it actually is. So that also means f double prime of x is nothing but, well, e to the x because negative one is going to vanish. And if we plug in zero into here, that also means f double prime of zero is nothing but, well, one. And this is indeed strictly greater than zero since one is the successor of zero. So that means this point right here, x naught, admits to a minimum. Okay, coolio, just like on my graph right here, this function is going to look something like this. I really don't care. But this thing right here admits to a minimum. Okay. But also the cool thing is, so this is zero and on the first derivative and zero is greater or equal to zero indeed. And no matter what numbers you plug in out of this interval right here, for example, one. So if you plug in one into here, this is two minus one is just positive one. If x goes to infinity, this is just infinity minus one. You could say positive, something positive. It's always going to be something positive. So that means our first derivative is greater or equal to zero for all x element out of this interval right here. Okay, 
Meaning, also if you take a look into your calculus one notes, that this function is monotonically increasing on this whole interval. And now we can restrict it even further, because if we just take zero out of this interval, so if we say x is now element of zero and infinity, but an open interval, then it also means f of x is going to be strictly greater than zero all the time, because it can only be equal to zero if we plug, well, zero into here. You see, zero, one minus one, it's just zero. So that's the only time when this thing is going to be equal to zero. And this right here is really good, because this gives us a strict order relation. <laughs> okay, I hope you could follow everything I said. This strict order relation is quite um, important, because we want to show that one of those is strictly greater than the other one. Okay, Coolio. So we want to plug some value into this f of x we have found out right here. But what could it possibly be? Well, I didn't make the video on the first day for nothing, because we have found something cool out before, namely that pi is strictly greater than e. Well, e is not equal to zero, because, well, it's not the root of a polynomial with integer coefficients. So we can just divide both sides by e. So that's equivalent to saying pi over e is greater than 1, strictly greater, and now we can just subtract 1 on both sides. So that's equivalent to saying pi over e minus 1 is strictly greater than 0. And this is really good because this right here is a strictly greater than 0 x value that we can plug into here. So that means we now end up with e to the pi over e minus 1. What is that? e to the negative 1 is just 1 over e. Let's simplify it. e to the pi over e over e is now strictly greater than, if we plug this into the right hand side of our order relation, then that also means negative 1 and 1 is going to cancel out, so this is just pi over e. We have found out that e is not equal to 0, so let's get rid of this on both sides. So that's equivalent to saying e to the pi over e is strictly greater than pi. And now we can just take the e power on both sides, the e power, that sounds really cool. To get that e to the pi is strictly greater than pi to the e. And that's what we wanted to find out. So this right here is quite an elegant approach to this problem. Steve did it differently, if I remember correctly, but I hope you did enjoy this new day of Papa Flemish Advent Calendar. <laughs> if you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. You can also support the channel on Patreon or buy those t-shirts I created. Don't forget to share those videos everywhere and up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya! This one week.